lecture we have considered the representation of bounded linear functional on the Hilbert space H as well as representation of sesquilinear form and we have seen that a bounded linear functional every bounded linear function f on a Hilbert space H can be expressed in terms of the inner product x z where z is uniquely determined by f and norm of z and norm of f is the same. Similarly, a sesquilinear functional we have defined m h from h 1 and h 2 are the two Hilbert spaces and h is a mapping from the Hilbert space h 1 cross h 2 to k a bounded sesquilinear form then h can be expressed as the inner product of s x y where s is an operator from h 1 to h 2 a bounded linear operator and is uniquely determined by h uniquely determined by h and have the same norm as the norm of h is it not this we have seen this two now this two representation will help you in introducing the concept of bounded hilbert adjoint operator concept of hilbert adjoint operators with the help of these two results we will introduce the concept of the hilbert adjoint operator uh, or hilbert adjoint operator of a bounded linear operator of a bounded linear operator t on the Hilbert space on Hilbert space H. <coughs> okay. Now, this concept bounded Hilbert adjoint operator in fact comes when we study the matrices of and linear and differential equations. When we go through the linear differential equation or integral differential equation all the matrices and convert it in the form of the operators then the concept of this Helbert adjoint operator comes. In fact, we will see that in case of the finite just like we say that symmetric matrix, edge, Hermitian matrix and all these things these will be the part of means they can be related with this Hilbert adjoint operators. Okay. So, today we will discuss in detail what is the Hilbert adjoint operator of a bounded linear operator on the Hilbert space H. So, that is the kind ok. So, let us see the Hilbert adjoint operator. Let us see first we def introduce define an Hilbert adjoint operator H. Let us suppose T be an operator let T from H 1 to H 2 be a bounded linear operator where H 1 and H 2 are Hilbert spaces where H 1 and H 2 are Hilbert spaces ok or Hilbert space. Then the Hilbert H joint operator T star a joint operator T star of T is the operator is the operator from H 2 to H 1 
from H2 to H1 such that such that for all x belongs to H1 and y belongs to H2, we have inner product of T x y equal to inner product of x T star y. Okay. It means what is the Elbert H joint operator? It is basically the conjugate operator type. If T is an operator from H1 to H2, then an operator from H2 to H1 will be called a Hilbert H joint operator provided these two inner products are identical. Here T x by x is a map point in H1, T is an operator which maps the element of H1 to H2 by is in H. So, basically this is the inner product of H2. X is an element of H and T star is a mapping from H2 to H1. So, this is the inner product of H1. So, this is a well defined inner product both. Now, when these two values are identical, then we say an operator T star from H2 to H1 is an inner is a Hilbert adjoint operator T star. Okay? Clear? So, this is what we now the question is if T be a bounded linear operator, whether this Hilbert adjoint operator T star will exist and if it exists, will it be unique? and existence and uniqueness is granted whether both will have the same norm or the norm will be different. Okay? So, in case if both are equal and having the norm same then obviously, it will be a useful thing. So, we uh, have a result which gives the guarantee for the existence of this Hilbert adjoint operator. Okay? So, what is the Hilbert adjoint operator T star? the Hilbert adjoint operator T star of T as defined as defined above let it be this as defined let it be by A as defined by A is ok as defined above or as defined by A exist is unique and is a bounded linear operator bounded linear operator with non with non norm of t star is the same as norm of t let it be this is say 1 this one is 2 okay so what this theorem says, says that if a t is giving to be a bounded linear operator then there is a guarantee that hilbert adjoint operator will always exist and not only exists, it will be unique in nature and the norm of T star and T will be identical. Okay? So, let us see the proof. Is it clear? So, let us see the proof. Okay. Let us start this as suppose consider the inner product of by T x h of y x. Okay? I am considering a function h defined on the Cartesian product of what? y is an element of h 2, x is an element of h 1. So, h is a function defined on h 2 cross h 1. Two because this is scalar. Now, this function is defined as y comma t x. Okay? Now, let us define this functional h from h 2 cross h 1 to k by this method. We claim 
that H is a sesquilineal form. It means H must be linear with respect to the first coordinate and conjugate linear with respect to the second coordinate. H is linear with respect to first coordinate obviously true. Huh? Why? Because because H is defined in terms of the inner product, H is defined in terms of inner product. So, it is linear with respect to y, with respect to the first coordinate y. Conjugate linear with respect to second coordinate y, it is conjugate linear with respect to x, because if I take h y alpha 1 x 1 alpha 2 x 2, then this can be written as by t of alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 because this alpha 2 x 2. We cannot say directly because of t is given, but since it is inner product, inner project is conjugate linear with respect to the second coordinate and t is given to be linear, t is given that is why it will be conjugate linear with respect to x also. This can be seen as it is y t is linear, so we can write alpha t x 1, alpha 1 t x 1, alpha 2 t x 2 as t is linear. Is it okay? Now, this can be written as y alpha 1 t x 1 plus y alpha 2 t x 2 and this can be written alpha 1 conjugate because it is inner product. So, alpha 1 take can be taken outside, so it becomes conjugate y comma t x 1 plus alpha 2 conjugate y comma t x 2 and this can be written as alpha 1 bar. What is this? H of x by x is defined as a by t x. So, this will come accordingly H of by H of y what? X 1 is it not? Similarly, alpha 2 bar H of y x 2. So, this shows the h is conjugate linear with respect to the second coordinate. Is it correct? So, h is a sesquilinear form. So, if I introduce this in this fashion, uh, let it be say 3, then h becomes a sesquilinear form. Further, we claim that h is bounded. H is bounded. It means bounded means excess linear form is said to be bounded if mod of this is our S okay. S S Q linear form H is bounded if mod of H x by is less than or equal to C times norm x norm by where C is some real number and the minimum value of c comes out to be norm h is it not so using this thing we can say uh, to find out the boundedness let us take the mod of h x by okay and then prove that this is less than or equal to constant times norm x into norm by so what is the mod of because mod of h by x is it correct? This is by definition mod of by inner product by T x, but by Schwarz inequality, there is relation between inner product and norm, it is less than or equal to norm by into norm T x, T is bounded, T is bounded, it is given. So, norm of T x is less than or equal to norm of T into norm of x into norm of y. Okay? So, c is nothing but norm t. So, h is bounded. Agreed? Uh, so, you know, taking the equation c huh. from our last, uh, last proof, no? uh -huh, yes. 
because uh, we have in already proved that any uh, uh, function such in a form will be given in form of the inner product, where inner product will be h x comma by and s is an operator like this. So, I have considered a, a functional or functional h of by x in the form of inner product. So far, we do not know the h is a sesquilinear form, but if it is linear with respect to first coordinate and conjugate linear with respect to second coordinate, then it becomes sesquilinear. The linearity followed because it is an inner product and T x the inner product is semi linear or conjugate with respect to second coordinate, but it is semi linear with respect to T x, but we do all interest in semi linear in with respect to x. So, T because of the linearity, it will give this break up into two parts and immediately one can write this. That is why it is a semi. Okay? So, basically it is coming from the form of that using that form. Is it correct or not? So, we get that this is a bounded sesquilinear form. So, h is we what we get is norm of h if I take this is h of by x mod of this is less than equal to norm of t norm of x norm of by is it okay or not this one. Now, this will be equal to norm of h this is equal to what h of by x over norm of x into norm of by supremum is taken over what x which is not equal to 0 by is not equal to 0, but uh, when you divide it is less than equal to norm t. So, what we conclude is norm of h is less than equal to norm t is it ok. So, this implies the norm of h is less than or equal to norm of t, but norm of h is equal to supremum mod of h by x over norm of x norm of y x is not equal to y y is not equal to 0. Now, if I this is true for all y which is different from 0 and all x which is different from 0. So, we can write this by t this is equal to what is the by x according to this third the h x by is nothing but the mod of inner product by t x. So, this is equal to inner product of by t x <coughs> divided by norm x norm by supremum is taken when x is not equal to 0 by is not equal to 0. Now, let us replace by by a particular value as t x. So, this will be entire thing will be greater than equal to mod t x t x over norm of x into norm of t x and supremum is when x is not equal to 0 particular value. So, this is nothing but the norm of t x square. So, this will give the norm of t x divided by norm x supremum x is not equal to 0 and that is nothing but what norm of t. So, this implies norm of h is greater than equal to norm of t combining this 1 and 2. So, 1 and 2 gives norm of h equal to norm of t. Okay? That is what. So, what we conclude is that we have introduced an functional hence this functional h which is defined as inner product of by t x is a bounded sesquilinear form. Not only sesquilinear, it is a bounded sesquilinear form. Okay? But by G H representation theorem, but by G H representation theorem, if you remember what is this boundary sesquilinear form? This is of the form h of x by 
yes this is yeah this was the boundary circle in a form in this way it means every boundary circle in a form will be represented in the form of inner product where s is an operator s1 and s2 let us compare these two what is the comparison here hx by nl by tx okay so basically you are writing that this by equal to tx is okay this portion by we are writing in terms of some operator is it not so if i write here s as an operator t star then what happens to this this will be equal to t star by comma x because by x is it not by x is so h of by x is a by such so by real representation theorem this h of by x h by x can be expressed as inner product of t star by comma x where s is replaced by replaced by t star is it not just like here no you just see here you just see here x comma by then when you take h of this what is the change change is coming it is nothing but a inner product where x is replaced by s of x that's all here we are taking this uh, this one h of by x i don't know the right hand side i'm not if i compare the right hand side along with this what should i write x will remain as it is by will remain as it is plus an operator will come okay so that's why s will replace by t star okay but this uh, image the domain of t star will be what h2 uh, is it not uh, and range will be h1 so you can say that we are t star is a mapping from h2 to h1 is it correct now is a integral okay now just like this s is replaced by this s is uniquely determined this is unique so this is also is uniquely determined by t is it not by t and have the same norm as the norm of t because norm of s equal to norm of t so it's clear but norm of t is equal to norm of h this is proved clear so what we conclude is that this ha yes yeah that's correct so we are getting this because of this clear this is proved norm of t star equal to norm of h and then we got it okay so this shows that norm of t star equal to norm of t because norm of t star norm of t is norm of h ha huh? and norm of h and this okay so we are getting this is it okay that's right so this proves that combining this we get third so conjugate and t star is an operator so that proves the result is it not because what we required to prove is that was that uh, hilbert has joined operator t star of t exist so existence of t star is guaranteed because s is gone and replaced by t star and existence of x is already proved in the representation theorem then it is unique because s is unique so t star will be unique and it is a bounded linear because s is a bounded linear over t star will also be bounded linear operator and norm of t star and norm of t will be the same so this everything is true and this we just complete the proof okay is it clear so we are using the sesquilinear linear form what representation here to identify clear now there are certain properties of this l joint operator l what a joint operator the in order to prove first prop, uh, lemma we will prove the lemma first 
and then go for the property. Okay. What is the lemma is let x and y be inner product spaces. and Q is mapping from X to Y a bounded linear operator. Operator. Then Q is 0 if and only if inner product of q x comma y is 0 for all x belongs to x and y belongs to capital Y and b part is that if q is operator from x to x earlier q was x to y if q is x to x where x is a complex x is complex inner product space and inner product of q x x is 0 means both the coordinates are same q x comma x 0 for all x belonging to capital x then q must be 0. So, first is of course, very simple because if we look the proof for the first then what is given q is 0. So, if q is 0 then basically the inner product of q x by becomes 0 into x comma by, but 0 is a scalar. So, we can take x by 0 is scalar quantity it can Ha, zero operator. So, ok, ok. I did not uh, let us see can you write this thing as 0 comma by 0 operator means it will send to 0. Now, it will be written 0 into w comma by now 0 into w. Now, you can take now this is 0. Okay. Ha, one of the coordinate is 0 means entire thing is 0. That is what. So, this is 0 for all x and y. So, this is 2 for all x and y. Now, conversely, suppose this is 0 x y. Conversely, if a x q x comma y 0 for all x belonging to capital X, y belongs to capital Y, okay? then replace y by q x. So, what we get from here is norm of q x is 0, which for every x. So, this implies q must be identically 0 operator. So, this one part is very easy. What is the second part says? If q is an operator from x to x itself, okay, and x is given to a complex inner product space, then q x x 0 will implies q must be 0 that is the inner product of q x x is 0 only when q has to be 0 if x be a complex. If x is not complex then this condition may fail. If capital X is a real space then q x x 0 need not implies q equal to 0. So, note in case if x is real then inner product of q x x equal to 0 need not imply q equal to 0. Why? For example, yeah, if I take q is a rotation operator, operator it rotate x to y by 90 degree rotates x 2 by by 90 degree. So, they are orthogonal. 
so qx is perpendicular to y therefore inner product of qx x will be zero so inner product of qx y will be qx x In qx in the qx by will be 0 x is it not so in our x here x is it correct or not so qx x 0 while q is not equal to 0 because rotation vector cannot be rotation operator cannot be 0 operator it rotate an angle through pi by 2 so x is a vector and qx becomes orthogonal to x so qx comma x this inner product becomes 0 where q is not a 0. So, what it says is that if q x x is 0 and if x is a complex, x belongs to a complex plane, then q must be 0. But if x is not complex, then q need not be 0, may or may not be 0. Okay? So, let us see the proof for this. Mm -hmm. So, proof for the second part. Okay? So, what we do is, let us assume q b be 0 for v, let assume let us start q v v this inner product is 0 okay? for v equal to alpha x plus y this an element belonging to capital X because x belongs to capital X y belongs to capital X and x is a better space. So, the linear combination belongs to this. Okay? Now, this will be Q V. Okay. So, what we get is inner product Q alpha x plus y comma alpha x plus y is 0. Okay. And this will be equal to inner product Q alpha times of Q x plus y comma alpha x plus y because q is giving to be a linear operator, is it not? q is a linear operator. q by, q times by, by q is a linear, q by, yes, this is q by, exactly. So, this is q by, okay. So, this will be equal to inner product of alpha q x comma alpha x plus by plus q by alpha x plus y. Okay? Now, this will be equal to alpha q x and this alpha can be okay, q x alpha x plus y I am writing sep okay? then q y comma alpha x plus q y comma y. Okay? Now, again this will be written as this alpha can be taken outside. So, alpha alpha conjugate q x comma x and then plus alpha q x comma y and plus alpha conjugate q y comma x plus q y y. Is it okay? But q x x is given to be 0. So, this part is 0 and this part is 0. So, what is left is now. So, we get from here is so we get alpha inner product of q x comma by plus alpha conjugate inner product of q by comma x is zero let it be third okay now if i take because alpha is a complex quantity so take alpha to be one so what we get is inner product q x comma by plus inner product q by comma x is 0 and when alpha is equal to i what do you get inner product of q x comma y minus q by comma x is 0 because i gets cancelled Al i alpha ball means minus i so therefore if i add then what we get is q x by is 0 agree where x belongs to capital X, y belongs to capital X. Now, this is the previous result A part, if you remember, what is the A part? 
a part says if q x by is 0 for all x belongs to x and y belongs to x, then q must be 0. So, if there is the same the x is replaced by that is all. So, from by previous by part a, this implies q must be 0. Okay? Clear? So, this proves the hmm? and when q is not, uh, when x is not complex, then you have greater contradiction which I have shown earlier. Okay, so that is this clear? Then this will be the i, uh, and this will be minus i. But i cannot be zero, na? Uh, so that's why. Okay. Uh, okay. So this. So this proves. Best now based on this lemma, we can establish many properties of the Hilbert joint. So, let us see various properties of the Hilbert adjoint operator. Okay. So, let H1 and H2 be Hilbert spaces. Hilbert spaces and S is an operator from H1 to H2 and T T is an operator from H1 to H2 and both are bounded linear operators. Operators and alpha n alpha any scalars. Okay? Then we have the following property. First, inner product of T star by comma x is the same as inner product by of T x. Uh, x belongs to H1 by belongs to H2. Okay. The do you remember this definition? This is different from the definition. Definition says inner product T x comma y is x T star by. Is it not? That was the definition of the uh, adjoint operator, Hilbert adjoint. Here we are saying T star by x, then D can be taken here and there. Okay. Second is S plus T star is S star plus T star, both are bounded. Then third alpha T star is the conjugate alpha T star. D T star star is T. Norm of T star T is the same as T T star, which is same as norm of T square F T star T equal to 0, if and only if T is equal to 0 and G S T star is equal to T star S star, <coughs> assuming that H 2 equal to H 1. Here assuming H 2 because otherwise this product is not well defined. Okay? So, these are the properties following. So, proof of this let us see the first property T star by comma x. We want this thing. So, we can write this as x T star by conjugate. When we make the conjugate, the order reverses, is it not? Now, you apply the definition of Hilbert adjoint operator. As per the Hilbert adjoint operator, T x by equal to x T star by. So, this will keep T x comma by by definition. Okay? But conjugate again give you by T x. 
so this proves that clear second part x plus t star so consider x s plus t star y okay now by definition of the conjugate because if s is a hilbert edge joint operator t is a hilbert edge joint operator both are then s plus t will also be a hilbert edge joint why because what is required is hilbert edge joint operator it should be a bounded linear operator from s to t if s is a bounded linear operator from one space to other t is also the boundary from h1 to h2 then some of these two will also remain bounded linear operators and then you find the mapping from h star to uh, h2 to h1 we will get the same so this is by definition s plus t x y which is the same as h x y plus t x y because linear property with respect to the first coordinate and then you write it again x s star by plus x t star by and add them up so we get s star plus t star by okay now this is equal to this can you say this product is equal to this x comma so can you say from here s plus t star equal to s star plus t star yes because by lemma first part lemma is saying what was the lemma uh, yes lemma is saying this qx by 0 implies q is 0 so this is true for all x and y is it not so if you take this one say take it here so x comma s plus t star minus s star t star by equal to 0 and this is true for all x and y so this has to be 0 this minus this has to be 0 and we get this okay so this clear or not so this by lemma then third part let us see the third c c is alpha t star we wanted to show alpha conjugate t star this is required to prove is it not so what we do is we start with consider consider alpha t star comma x y comma x is it not now this will be written as y comma alpha t x but alpha is in the second bracket so conjugate sign will come and this will be equal to alpha wall t star by comma x so this will be equal to alpha wall alpha wall sorry t star by comma x and then again this is true for all x and y so we get from here is alpha t star y is alpha wall t star similar way okay similarly fourth d star d can be computed in a similar way then no problem is it correct no? now fifth one e what is e is t star t equal to t t star equal to now so first we have to in define accordingly so that the t star t and t what is the t t is a mapping from h1 to h2 is it not this was the h1 to h2 so t star will be an operator from h2 to h1 so when we write t star t it means first it will take the elements from h1 then it will go on th1 will be the element of h2 so basically it is from what h1 to h1 is it not h1 to h2 and what is t t star h2 to h2 okay so it means the domain of this and domain of this are not the same but what it says is that their norm will be remain the same okay so let us see the norm of t both are equal to the norm of t square okay so consider 
norm of T x square. Okay. Now, this can be written as inner product of T x T x is it correct and this will be equal to start with this to T star T x comma x is it not T star T x comma x. Now, T and T star both are bounded these are giving to be a bounded operators. So, they are bounded operators. T star will also be bounded linear operator. So, this is a bounded linear operator. Okay. So, by the Schwarz inequality, modulus of this inner product is less than or equal to norm of this into norm of this. Sir, T is bounded, T star is bounded. Bounded operator. Uh, that is norm of T1 into T2 is less than equal to norm T1 into norm T2. So, that will give the boundedness. Okay. So, that will be the Schwarz. So, by applying the Schwarz, we get from here is now this is less than equal to norm of T star T into norm of x into norm of x square. Is it not? By this is norm of this into norm of this again this is less than equal to norm of this because basically this will be like this norm of t star t into norm of x further it will be less than equal to this and we get this part okay norm of t star t divide by norm x square so what we get it this is equal to so divide by norm x square and take the supremum so we get norm of t is less than equal to is it not clear is it correct or not now this will be further less than equal to norm of t star into norm of t is it right norm of t square this is norm of t square sorry norm of t square Okay. So, this will be equal to norm of t star t which is less than equal to norm t, but what is the norm of t? Norm of t star. Huh, t star is nothing but the norm of t. It means these two are identical when they are two equal. So, this implies norm of t star t must be equal to norm of t star norm of t. No. And basically, both will be equal to norm of t square. Clear? So, this proves that result. Is it okay or not? Similarly, you can start with t t star. Similarly, start with norm t t star. In a similar way, you can show. Is it not? Huh. 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 Then t t star equal to 0, this f follows from here from e. Why t t star is 0? t t star is 0, automatically t will be 0 and vice versa. So, nothing is there. And g s t star, this we have to show. Okay. So, consider x s t star by. Okay. Now, this will be equal to s t x comma by. Okay. Now, this is equal to what? T x s star by and which is equal to x t star s star by and this implies s t star equal to t star s. So, order reverses. And so, this completes your this part. Agreed? So, this. <coughs> 
Okay. Now there are, as I told you earlier, that this Albert H joint operator, we can connect it this with our matrices, okay, operator. And in fact, as a particular case, our self-adjoint operator, symmetric operator, they can be con converted or can be considered in terms of this relation between these two. We, this self-adjoint operator in a particular case is, can be classified in three, okay. The, what we have now, self-adjoint, self-adjoint, unitary and normal operator. The definition will depend on this. <coughs> Classes of boundary linear operators in proteins and this. So, we define as a bounded linear operator a bounded linear operator T from H to H on a Hilbert space on a Hilbert space H is said to be said to be self adjoint. or Hermitian if T star equal to T, okay. Then unitary if T is bijective means 1 1 on 2 bijective and T star equal to T inverse. So, when T is a 1 1 on 2 inverse exist and normal if T T star equal to T star T. Okay. So, a bounded linear operator T on a Hilbert space is said to be self adjoint if the Hilbert adjoint operator of T coincide with the operator T itself. When T is a 1 1 on 2 and the Hilbert adjoint operator is coincide with the T inverse of the operator T, then we say it is a unitary and when T T star star T star T is a normal. Okay. So, the Hilbert adjoint T is defined. Now, this is uh, remark, okay. if T is self adjoint or unitary then t is normal every self adjoint operator is a normal operator every unitary operator is a normal operator why what is the definition of the normal t t star we wanted to t star t so if i write here T star, if it is self adjoint, then T star become T. So, what is the T T star? T square and what is this? T square, same. So, self adjoint operator will be normal operator. If it is unitary, then T star is nothing but T inverse. So, T T star becomes I and T star T also becomes I. So, basically every self adjoint unity operator, is, it means self adjoint implies the normal, unitary implies the normal. But normal operator need not be self adjoint or need not be the unitary. Clear? Converse need not be true. An operator may be normal, but it need not be a self adjoint operator or unitary. For example, if we consider an operator i from h to h, an identity operator, an identity operator and t 
I consider to be 2 I I. Okay? Consider T J. Then what we claim is T is normal. Why normal? Because what is the T star? T star is 2 I I star and this will be equal to what? Conjugate of this minus 2 i i clear. So, T t star becomes what 2 i 2 i 4 i square that is 4 into i and that is the T star T also. So, T is normal, but T is not self adjoint. Why? Why self adjoint? Because T star is equal to T, because T star which is coming to be minus 2 i i is different from 2 i i that is T. So, it is not self adjoint, it is not unitary. Why? Because what is the T inverse? T inverse will be minus i y 2 i, because T into T inverse should be i. So, this gets cancelled 2 to n i square. So, T uh, star which is not equal to T inverse. So, it is not unitary. Okay? So, this thank you.